first let us have a look at introduction in the year 1896 dr kent treated more than 18800 patients and in 1897 dr kent treated more than 16000 patients he has noted the accurate observations after the prescription of remedy which is known as 12 observations so these observations are nothing but dr kent while treating so many number of patients and he has meticulously noted all the observations and he has included it under the title of kane's 12 observations namely prognosis after observing the action of remedy against well observations we have to study for the purpose to understand the scope and limitations of homeopathy the stage of disease whether it is functional or structural then selection of remedy and potency and its repetitions then to decide the follow up criteria and to understand the prognosis of the case it also helps in the determination of second prescription so the here i give you the structure that means the points under which we will be discussing the kane's observations so first we will be discussing the statement then we will try to understand that in under which pathological conditions we get this type of observation now whether the remedy prescribed by the physician is right or wrong whether the potency administered is right or wrong is there any mistake of physician what is the effect seen on the case after his prescription then is it any corrective action the physician has to take and lastly the prognosis of the case so this is in brief the structure of the observations we will be discussing so just have a look at the language of organon i want you to learn the language of organon see what happens in homeopathy and what happens in modern medicine so let's have a look in homeopathy health and diseases are considered due to the functioning of vital force and disease is its derangement so health and disease are the phenomena due to functioning of vital force and its derangement is disease in modern medicine we consider health is nothing but measurement of temperature pulse respiratory rate blood pressure disease is nothing but organ pathology they deny the existence of vital force and material cause is the cause of the disease see here in homeopathy symptoms represent the disease in the form of totality of symptoms and totality of symptoms contains causes also so removal of totality is removal of cause also here till in modern medicine till the time visible organ pathology is not developed they don't accept that the presence of disease okay so and if the patient is getting the just the symptoms of burning in the epigastrium 
so endoscopy is advised but on endoscopy the result is patient is not getting any ulcer it is not seen in endoscopy so till the time the patient does not develop the pathology they don't accept the disease so this patient is sent home by prescription of some antacids here in homeopathy the approach will be different where this patient the cause of this burning in the epigastrium will be searched and his mental disposition his physical symptoms entirely will be taken and a prescription is done which will relieve the patient and he will be prevented from progress from functional pathology to structural pathology individualization is done in homeopathy as i told you just now that the mental makeup of the person as well as the physical constitution will be studied in modern medicine removal of the external cause is advised such as removal of warts removal of piles and that is cure in homeopathy mental generals and physical generals are important for the choice of similimum they represent the functioning and derangement of vital force if mental generals and physical generals are deviated it means the person is in the state of disease due to the derangement of vital force in modern medicine physical particulars are choice of treatment whereas the in homeopathy mental generals and physical generals are important and they are the indicators for the choice of similimum they represent the invisible vital force removal of totality of symptoms is removal of disease and it is cure as is the concept in homeopathy in modern medicine ointment surgery removes the visible pathology and it is considered as cure name of disease is not important in homeopathy because the disease classification is done on clinical basis on symptoms basis it is not nosological in homeopathy in modern medicine treatment is done according to the name of the disease in homeopathy disease is not visible pathology in homeopathy it is considered that the pathology is the outcome or ultimate of disease it means disease is prior to pathology and how to identify this disease which is prior to pathology very easy pathology is in some organs so these are physical particular symptoms and what dr kane teaches us that disease is before the pathology and pathology is the outcome of disease so what is the disease where is the disease disease is in the mental generals and physical generals of the patient so this is the abnormal sensations which the patient will experience and this is the disease it is in the invisible form these are the sensations of the patient so disease is in the mental generals and physical general symptoms this is invisible disease if it progresses it ends up in visible pathology okay so we go further the language of organon 
discontinued concept of disease as i just now told you no visible pathology appears without internal disturbance of vital force invisible changes of disease gives rise to visible organ pathology as i told you just now the invisible changes of disease are abnormal mental generals and physical generals of the case and these abnormal mental generals and physical generals are giving rise to the physical particulars of visible organ pathology disease is not pathology disease is prior to pathology this is homeopathic concept of disease especially kane's view so concept of disease that we will be doing in the language of organon is evaluation of disease is done whether the disease is functional or structural whether the disease is reversible or irreversible functional means patient experiencing abnormal sensations structural means the patient is showing the visible pathology microscopic or macroscopic disease is reversible means it will be of functional type and readily reversible irreversible means it will be of structural type and irreversible pathology has taken place in the organs so disease will be curable or incurable so curable means again nothing but reversible pathology so whether the presence of characteristic symptoms are more or common symptoms are more that also will have to be evaluated in the case so all these indicates high susceptibility on the left side and on the right side it indicates low susceptibility and what we mean by evolution of disease evolution of disease is the as we have discussed previously the disease evolves first as abnormal sensations in mental generals and physical generals this gives rise to abnormal physical particulars and further develops into abnormal structure structure means microscopic or macroscopic changes in the organs so thus i have put the arrows mental generals and physical generals so disease originates first in the mental generals so patient is having experiencing some abnormal sensations then physical generals again patient is experiencing some abnormal sensations and then the patient develops physical particulars which is nothing but the pathology thus the in the evolution of disease changes in the mental generals and physical generals are not seen outside they are felt by the patient these are invisible symptoms and over a period of time the pathology develops and then there are visible symptoms so visible symptoms means visible to the eyes say or visible to the eyes with respect to microscope or macroscope so pathology visible to the naked eyes that is macroscopy say there is a lipoma which has developed or acne has developed eczema has developed that is visible to eyes macroscopy or microscopy means only the Uh, pathology is inside the organs and on biopsy we see that there is a microscopic pathology has started 
in the form of for example dysplasia in the form of hyperplasia etc so we go further i think this is very much essential to understand the discussion on kane's observation so that we are we have studied the kane's view point about the concept of disease so let's come to now first observation so as i have already told you the structure so first is statement all of you know the statement it is prolonged aggravation and final decline of patient so what do you understand by this and in which situation you will get such a observation so which situation let's understand that whenever the patient comes with the pathology of advanced irreversible changes in the vital organs in such cases there is a possibility that you will get such a type of observation called as prolonged aggravation and final decline of patient second is what is the remedy choice physician has selected a similimum but he has selected a deep acting remedy what about potency physician has selected a high potency than required and what is the mistake of physician physician has made a mistake of choosing a deep acting remedy in high potency in advanced pathological cases now let's con consider what do you mean by advanced pathological cases so what is the observation prolonged aggravation and final decline of patient so in which situation you may get this type of aggravation in the pathology is advanced irreversible changes in vital organs for example malignancy in liver or lungs so in such cases if you give a deep acting remedy what will be the situation see further so what is the effect seen that in the pathology of irreversible type physician administers a similimum but a deep acting and in higher potency what is the effect seen this caused killers homeopathic aggravation and patient died decline of patient so let's take example that patient of ca liver was given a similima deep acting remedy say for example lycopodium one m or lacesis one m after matching the totality this caused severe aggravation of patient symptoms weak vital force made a last effort in removing the debris of pathology due to high potency of the remedy but in doing so underlying arteries got exposed causing severe hemorrhage and that was fatal physician should have selected a superficial remedy in a low potency so this is also discussed that what physician should do when he get patients with advanced pathology in vital organs physician should have selected superficial remedy in low potency what is the action 
physician should immediately stop the remedy give antidote prognosis is unfavorable this is also called as mercy killing or euthanasia see patient was suffering from malignancy say with metastasis and he was already in a state where he was in a state of maybe weak severe weakness severe morbid conditions and his prognosis was unfavorable but due to the administration of a homeopathic remedy he died soon which he had a bad prognosis but he could have lived a life but due to the administration of deep acting remedy by mistake of the physician and that too in high potency was prescribed this led to patient's death this is called as mercy killing that is patient died silently but early and that is also the labeled as euthanasia so many times we ask that in which kens observation you get euthanasia so it is a first observation so we proceed further to second observation what is the statement the long aggravation but final and slow improvement of the patient so in which conditions you will see such a aggravation in the when the pathology is of borderline type that is advanced but there are reversible changes in vital organs so it is not gone to the extent of irreversibility here remedy selected is similimum but again a deep acting remedy so potency selected was high potency than required is there a mistake yes what is the mistake of the physician physician made a mistake of choosing a deep acting remedy in high potency in borderline pathological cases borderline pathology means it is on the boundary of irreversibility and reversibility patient has not gone into the stage of irreversibility so here borderline pathology means advanced pathology but not irreversible it is a reversible pathology in the vital organs so physician selected a similimum which was a kind of deep acting remedy and it was a mistake of physician to select a high potency of deep acting remedy in such case instead he should have selected a superficial remedy and in low potency what is the effect seen there is severe aggravation of symptoms due to high potency of deep acting remedy physician should have selected a superficial remedy in low potency so what is the effect seen due to the prescription of deep acting remedy in high potency there is a severe aggravation of symptoms so instead physician should have selected a superficial remedy in low potency what is the action physician should see, uh, take when he sees such a aggravation he should immediately stop the remedy give placebo aggravation soon settles down and what is the prognosis of course it is favorable so during the phase of aggravation give placebo it will soon settle down okay so we go to the third observation 
what is the statement the aggravation is quick short and strong with rapid improvement of patient so pathology what is the pathology as the aggravation is quick short and strong so it is for a very short time and followed by rapid improvement of patient so pathology is functional there are only superficial changes in the organs so functional pathology just superficial changes manifested by few symptoms in the organs remedy administered is a similimum potency is correct potency except a little higher so what is a mistake if at all so there is a slight mistake but physician is given the concession so physician made a mistake of choosing little higher potency of remedy in this case it was little higher than required but potency cannot be made so small otherwise it won't act so this is a concession given to the physician that physician has chosen a potency little higher but for achieving cure <clears throat> he has to administer a little higher potency because the artificial disease produced by the remedy should be stronger and similar so so it has to be stronger hence potency was selected higher so the dose given was higher but it appeared a little more higher so that was the mistake of physician but he cannot make dose small otherwise it may not register also so potency cannot be made so small otherwise it won't act there is a maximum susceptibility of similimum towards similar totality hence the morbid energy of natural disease was covered by the stronger similar disease or stronger artificial disease produced by the remedy administered this caused the patient to feel more sufferings of the symptoms what is the effect seen so this caused more sufferings of the patient so aggravation of symptoms due to little higher potency of remedy given but for a short time it is followed by rapid improvement of patient and the most important part in this aggravation is yet patient feels better what is it patient feels better so even though there is aggravation of symptoms patient feeling better means what patients particular symptoms are aggravated but his general symptoms like appetite weakness sleep they all starts improving now if you see such a type of aggravation in functional pathology what is the action to be taken stop the remedy give placebo and patient is soon ameliorated prognosis is favorable this type of aggravation physician longs for because the prognosis is favorable and disease is in the functional stage and if the at all there is an aggravation of such type 
it will not last long it is followed by long lasting improvement of the patient so first second and third kinds observations are homeopathic aggravations so see the characteristic features of these homeopathic aggravation there is intensification of symptoms at the beginning so symptoms are aggravated after the remedy is administered which symptoms are aggravated particular symptoms are aggravated and generals are better patient feels better appetite thirst and weakness is better this aggravation soon passes remedy always is similimum but in first two cases due to the higher potency it caused severe aggravation of symptoms and the pathology was advanced pathology so in first case the patient declined never to return back again and in the second observation as the again the patient was on the borderline pathology so after a phase of aggravation he started recovering so why there was aggravation because the maximum susceptibility to the similimum with the totality and potency selected was higher than required but the point is that potency may not be so small otherwise it won't act so in the aggravation stop the remedy aggravation soon disappears it is temporary so this was in the discussion of first second and third observation so i want you all to learn the minute details of these observations and have a conceptual clarity okay thank you